All right, guys, welcome to the next part of my mask making video. Um, so, if you saw my previous videos, I made a mask out of monster clay, and now I want to mold it out of uh, silicone rubber. So I went down to uh, Reynolds Advanced Materials. Uh, that's my new favorite store now. Um, I picked up some Rebound 25, which is a brush on silicone mold, as well as I got some Smooth Cast 65D, which is a uh, uh, a resin that you pour in the silicone mold. Um, they told me there that this stuff was really good for masks and helmets because it got a little uh, flexibility and not, it's not as rigid and brittle. I also picked up some uh, mold release, easy ease, uh, ease release 200, and I got some colorant and some Thyvex. This uh, stuff is a thickener. It's gonna be used like for later on after I do the first couple of coats of silicone. To thicken up the silicone and uh, just to make it more of a uh, roundish shape and fill in a lot of the bigger gaps. Cool. Um, I also got this stuff. It's called uh, Sergeant Plastilina. I got this stuff on Amazon though. It was like 13 bucks. You get five pounds of it, and this is just some uh, oil-based, sulfur-free clay. I'm going to be using this stuff as a uh, barrier around the head cast to kind of keep the silicone in one place as well as protect it from the fiberglass mother mold which I'm going to do on top of that. Um, so to do a couple of tests though I uh, made these out of that same stuff and uh, these are going to be my fuse for my registration keys. I did a couple of uh, things on my mold like used uh, odorless mineral spirits and some rubbing alcohol to kind of smooth out some details and I'm not really sure how that's going to react with the silicone so I'm going to do a couple of tests in this stuff while I'm making some registration keys and then I can kind of just play with the silicone and get used to it before I really start doing uh, the heavy work on my mask. Alright guys, well, um, I'll take make a video of this stuff and we'll see the results and then uh, we'll get started on the actual molding of the mask. Okay, so I forgot to mention as to why I'm going to be using this uh, Sergeant Plastilina as the boundary for uh, the silicone and the, and the mother mold stuff. Um, and that's because it's cheap. I mean, this clay is really soft, it's really squishy. And um, honestly, it was 13 bucks, so I don't care if I mess it up. Uh, versus the monster clay, which was pretty expensive, it was like 30 bucks for five pounds of it. Um, so I want to take a little more better care of that stuff. And so yeah, this is kind of disposable clay that I could just use for whatever. Well, all right, guys. So to get started with these uh, registration keys, I made a couple just in case I have a little bit of extra silicone. Never hurts to have too many registration keys, I guess. Um, so with the tests I did, I uh, wiped the inside of this one with a little bit of alcohol. Uh, I think it was 99% isopropyl alcohol. I found somewhere online that said to use that to help smooth monster clay and it actually doesn't work whatsoever. Um, I think it was just some bad information or they're talking about something else. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyways, and then in this one I used um, odorless mineral spirits. And that stuff worked really well for smoothing out the monster clay and uh, taking out fingerprints and tool marks and that kind of stuff. And in this one, I sprayed a little bit of the canned air, the air duster. I found that that actually helps really well to uh, harden the clay, because after a while of working, it gets really soft. So anyways, um, I got my two measuring cups. I'm going to put my part A in here, my part B in here. I already got it measured out, and I just used a ruler from there. And uh, with the Rebound 25, it is a one-to-one -one mixture. Um, it says to use it in a well-ventilated area. I have the fan on and the window open, so I think I should be okay. Um, I don't know, if nothing else, I got my respirator just in case. Um, I probably shouldn't even be doing this inside, but whatever. I also have a uh, floor mat down, because there's carpet, and I don't want to ruin the carpet. So. is why you do it somewhere else, not in your house. Alright, that looks good enough to me. Okay, let's mix this stuff. You know, I think I need a plastic spoon. Or something. This stuff is not very... Mm, kind of a pain in the ass. Okay. Yep, and I'm making more of a mess. Okay, that's what I do. Alright, be back. I'm going to give me a spoon. 
All right, let's try this again. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much easier. So, lesson number one, use the proper tools. I wish I had uh, some popsicle sticks, but I didn't feel like running to the store to get them, and uh, that was my mistake. Because this silicone is pretty damn sticky. Okay, so I think that looks good. I think we're ready to pour. Stuff don't smell bad actually at all. I don't know. What, I don't know what I was worried about. Okay, so since we have a little bit left over, we don't need those no more. I'm gonna make another uh, mold, like an like ice cube tray type deal for my silicone. Let me clean these up while I still can. I probably should have worn gloves. Again, learn from my mistakes, not from what I do. Next time I'll be smarter about this. Now I'm probably not going to use all these registration keys on my mask, probably just a couple of them. But I'll have these for future root, uh, use and it'll save me some time later on. The main thing that part of this experiment was just to see what the silicone does and see how big of a mess I'm going to make. So when I do the large scale, I'll be prepared. Alrighty guys, well it's been about six hours since I poured these and I just popped them out and uh, sure enough, like, like they say, silicone doesn't stick to anything but itself. They came out really easy. A little bit of uh, residue left over, but I just gotta wash that off. Whatever, so that clay comes off pretty easily. Um, now for the small scale testing part of what I want to find out, um, the alcohol, the odorless mineral spirits, and the compressed air duster residue, none of that stuff will inhi inhibit the platinum cure silicone. So that's a good thing to know. I was kind of worried about that. I didn't want to put this stuff on my mask and not have it cure, because then it's pretty much going to ruin the mask um, and stuff. Yeah, also I learned that uh, even though this stuff doesn't really smell at all, it still gives off some fumes. Um, I did have the window open and I also uh, had the fan going, but that wasn't enough. I still got a little bit of a headache. It wasn't bad and I just went outside and got more fresh air and was fine afterwards. But use better ventilation. I'm inside my room and uh, it's kind of been closed, but like I said, it still wasn't enough. I have a uh, respirator I got from Harbor Freight for like 15 bucks. I'll probably use that next time because I don't like going outside. Um, also, gloves. Gloves really help. Um, I had them there the whole time. I just forgot to use them and they got, the silicone got all over my hands and it was just kind of sticky and gross and slimy. Just save yourself some work and probably safer too. Just use gloves. These are nitro gloves. I picked those up at Harbor Freight too. Uh, don't use latex. Uh, I've seen everywhere that latex gloves will inhibit platinum cure silicone. So you don't want to use that stuff at all. Also, um, popsicle sticks. Just buy some damn popsicle sticks. I used uh, uh, these coffee stirs and they were just not doing a good job of mixing and then I went and got a plastic knife. It worked, but the main thing is you need something with a flat side so you can scrape the insides of the cups and get all the silicone and stuff really mixed up. They're really good. And um, yeah, I mean that does it for my small scale test of my registration keys and uh, I'm ready to start uh, doing the mold of my mask. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll upload videos of the mask sculpt, uh, the mask uh, molding process uh, soon after this one. Thank you.